Beyblade X is finally here, and all of the pre-orders have arrived. It is finally time to start taking a look at the new releases one by one and getting into some test battles. And where else to start than the attack type at the forefront of Beyblade X, BX01 Dran Sword. But before we get into the bay itself, if you end up enjoying this video, consider subscribing to stay notified on my future videos, and feel free to click the card in the top right corner to check out some of my other Beyblade related content. But that's enough of the shameless plug. Let's take a look at the first bay to come out of Beyblade X. BX01 Dran Sword is a starter set, meaning it comes with a ripcord launcher, which, as you could expect, is different from the previous generations, mine is slightly different from the one in this set, as it has a launcher grip attached for better comfort and control during use. The launcher face features a tri-wing design, unlike in previous generations, for a better use to grip the bay and with a cordis pulled should roughly get 8.5 rotations before the cord is ejected. Another thing dissimilar to previous generations, the launcher face continues to spin once the cord is removed, getting rid of that stopper that can slightly cripple your total RPM. Taking a look at the back of the box, it gives you a rough idea of what each part's strengths and weaknesses are, along with the character who uses said bay in the show. The booster also comes with a skill up guide sheet, which can help give you ideas for a combo using parts from this set. In this instance, it is Dran Sword 380 Tapered. Other than the launcher, this booster comes with three parts, the blade, the ratchet, and the bit, and every one of them are solid parts. Starting off with the blade, Dran Sword is the foremost attack type blade for Beyblade X with three main contact points for knocking opponents around with a strong smash attack, capable of quickly ending rounds with knockouts, bursts, or the much coveted extreme finish. However, you have to consider, it has fairly per stamina, so you'll be unlikely to win in a drawn out match. 360 is currently the lowest height ratchet available, at 60mm, and as the other number implies, has three contact points. Its low height allows the potential of letting its bay hit the underside of its taller opponents, destabilizing them for a spin out or even bursting them if you can land a good hit on the ratchet. The one downside is that the 360 ratchet has a lower burst resistance than the 80 ratchets, though this is balanced out by it being too low for anything currently available to easily reach. Flat, as with previous generations, generates a fair amount of friction making it currently the go-to bit for bays who want to be aggressive. It's able to move fast and take full advantage of the new stadium gimmick, the Extreme Line, riding the ridge at high speeds to KO opponents. As with its blade, flat stamina leaves much to be desired, which is understandable and to be expected of a fully attack-orientated bit. Next, let's weigh the parts. Apologies for my scales, I didn't realise when I bought it the LCD wouldn't show up on camera. Firstly, the blade. Dran Sword clocks in at 34.8 grams, which is, I believe, currently the heaviest blade in the game, other than Shark Edge. Next, the Ratchet 360, which is at 6.33 grams. It should go without saying, but it is the shortest and has the least contact points, so naturally it would also be the lightest ratchet. And to top it all off, the bit. I said the bit. The bit. The bit sits roughly at 2.26 grams, and at the time of scripting, all the released bits are largely the same weight. Let's take a look at what the bay looks like fully assembled. The ratchet just twists into place underneath the blade, and the bit slots into this hole on the bottom of the ratchet. Comparing the X bays to previous generations, they, at first glance, look most similar to the Metal Series bay blades, at least diameter wise. However, they are notably taller, reaching more of the height of the burst bays. Back on the scales, the fully assembled bay weighs a modest 43.42 grams. Given all we know about these parts, I predict Stock Dran Sword is going to be an incredibly solid attack type, with all the pros and cons associated with it. Aggressive movement pattern, with high friction and recoil, and is at its best at the start of a round but quickly will run out of momentum in a drawn out match. Before moving into a test battle, let's see how the bay performs in an isolated environment with some test launches, beginning with a light launch. Conforming to flat tips from previous generations, flat has an aggressive movement pattern, circling the outside of the arena 
and getting occasional speed boosts off the extreme line. That said, it comes with the same downside of its predecessors. That aggression means it has fairly poor stamina. Next, a hard launch. As predicted, its movements are largely the same, except it moves even faster and much more aggressive than before. And to top off our test launches, I'd like to see how the banking launch holds up in this new stadium. Before testing this out, I assumed banking was a thing of the past, with the addition of the extreme line. But no, the same as the previous generation, it moves in a flower pattern towards the centre. The only difference being that the extreme line can break the angled movement pattern and return it to normal. Right, I think you've waited long enough. I think it's time for some test battles. Starting off, a Bay Dran Sword should have an advantage over the stamina type Wizard Arrow. The first round was not a great start, with Dran Sword not getting anywhere near enough solid hits and scoring one point to Wizard in a spin out finish. In the second round, I learnt my lesson on how to use this bay and went for a banked sliding shot, which immediately scored two points to Dram Sword with a knockout. Third round, I tried to get a bit more movement out of Wizard to see if I could deal with a sliding shot, but it seems like there was no contest, scoring another two points to Dram Sword and winning the match. Next up is a bay that should have the advantage. Knight Shield. First round was quite Odd. Dran Sword wins by a spin out finish, awarding it one point, but that has to be a fluke, right? Going into round two, the same thing happens again. Not making a good look for Stock Knight Shield. Round three, then ended in a burst, awarding Dran Sword two points and winning the second match. Somehow. Full honesty, I was rooting for Knight Shield but I severely underestimated the power of Dran Sword in this match. Finally, to top off the test battles, a combo of my own. Knight Lance 360 Tapered. I was expecting this to be able to finally take Dran Sword down a peg, but again, no. It takes the first point to a spin out finish. Going into round two, things are looking good, and are you serious? Dran Sword steals another point to a spin out finish. Are you sure this isn't a stamina type? This isn't meant to happen. Round 3. I've given up hope of anything beating this. Dran Sword is doing too well in everything, but it's not landing any big hits here, and Night Shield finally takes a point to a spin out finish. This is what should be happening. Is the pendulum finally swinging in Knight's favor? No. If these test battles have shown me anything, it's that Dran Sword has better stamina than I initially thought, and it is also a beast of an attack type. Provided it can land its hits, there's nothing that's currently released that it doesn't have a chance against. Well, except maybe Hell Scythe 480 Ball, but that's a combo for another video. Thank you for watching. I can't stress enough how thankful I am for you sticking with me, even with my terrible upload schedule. Between a full-time job, moving out, my daughter on the way, saying that my time to work on videos at the minute is limited would be an understatement. Anyway, that's enough from me. Milgo signing off. Peace.